Hello everyone. Welcome to our video about Bodo, the universal Python analytics platform. My name is Nick Riesenowski, and I'm a software engineer here at Bodo AI. In this video, I'm going to take you through a demonstration using Bodo, so you can see firsthand how easy it is to transform your Python analytics workloads. But first, let's recap what makes Bodo so powerful. Bodo is designed to transform all of your Python data science and machine learning applications into efficient and parallel binaries. If you're already writing code using standard Python libraries, especially pandas and numpy, then Bodo can most likely take your existing code and make it capable of scaling to large data sets. But Bodo isn't another Python API. Instead, Bodo is capable of transforming existing applications using standard Python APIs without any code rewrites. Where in other systems you may need to write C++, Spark, SQL, or Scala to make your application scale, Bodo just requires you to indicate what operations you want to speed up, and as I'll show you in the demo today, it's extremely easy. There is no glue code, and that's extremely important, because it means the same application can be used in development and production. This makes Bodo easier to learn than any other analytics platform, meaning you can spend more time designing your application and less time worried about making it scale. In addition, Bodo is unlike any other analytics platform because it offers true parallelism. Bodo is designed for the modern data scientist. So while HPC experts spend years writing applications in C++, Bodo produces those applications automatically while working with developer-friendly Python APIs. Typically, when we talk about designing scaling architectures, there's a trade-off between parallelism and productivity. And every existing system has tried to offer some compromise between those two contrasting ideas. Bodo is different because there is no compromise. You get both the productivity of the best data science libraries, as well as the parallelism of the best HPC applications. If you're interested in learning more about Bodo, you can visit our website, which is the same as our name, bodo.ai. You can also check out our first Medium blog post, which is linked in the description, or you can check out our video introducing Bodo for a more detailed overview. Now, let's jump into our demo. To run those demos, we're going to use Jupyter IPython notebooks. Now, to run our Jupyter IPython notebooks, we're going to use the brand new Bodo platform. So to create our Jupyter IPython notebooks, we first need to create a cluster in AWS on which we want to actually run. So to do that, from inside my Bodo platform, I'm going to go to Clusters, and I'm going to select Create Cluster. Now first, I need to name my cluster. Let's just call this example cluster. Then I need to select my AWS instance types. So I'm going to, for this example, let's pick C5x large, and I'll choose four of those instances. And so now the Bodo platform, when I click Create, is going to create a cluster in AWS with those instance types. In addition, if I wanted to configure different settings, say, for example, change the region or provide an SSH key so that I could SSH in, I can do this from the advanced options. But for now, let's just create our cluster. OK, so now that our cluster is finished creating, let's create a notebook to attach to our cluster. So we're going to create a new notebook here. Let's call it the example notebook. The description notebook for our demo. The instance type, let's just choose the same instance. And finally, we'll attach it to our cluster. And now the Bodo self-service platform will create this inside of AWS, and we'll attach it to our cluster. All right, so now our notebook is finished creating. So let's navigate over to Jupyter Hub so we can open our first example. I'm going to select this file called pi.ipython notebook. And what's inside here is some NumPy code that corresponds to estimating the value of pi. It does so using the Monte Carlo method, which means it generates a large number of random points. So let's run this first in just normal Python. That's going to run sequentially on a single core because there is no native parallelism to the NumPy API. And we see that takes about 5.1 seconds to execute. Now, let's tell Bodo that we want to optimize this function. To do that, all we need to do is add this simple decorator, bodo.jit, you see right here. And that's it. At this point, when we run this again, this will tell Bodo to replace this native Python code with an optimized and parallelized binary. However, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're first going to run this on just a single core which means we won't have any of the parallelization optimizations. We'll just get the benefit of sequential optimizations. So I'm going to run that right now. And you might be surprised to see that execution time has decreased dramatically to just two seconds. Now, why is that? What are these sequential optimizations? 
Basically, this gives us the ability to fuse together common operations. For example, we see that x and y create random points. In just the normal NumPy API, it would go through create all of x, then it would create all of y. Bodo can optimize that so it happens together and can avoid the allocation of intermediate arrays when possible. Finally, let's run this over our whole cluster. So what I'm going to do is just add this px, and that tells Bodo to run over the cluster. And when we run that, we see that execution time has decreased dramatically to just 0.06 seconds. And that's because it's now paralyzed over 32 different cores. As you see, there are 32 outputs. I remember we had 64 virtual CPUs or 32 cores in our cluster. Okay, so our next example is going to require a little bit more compute power. So I've upgraded our cluster to four workers that are each C5n 18x large instances, which each instance now has 72 virtual CPUs. So to get a little bit more detail on this actual example, we're running an example from the TPCH benchmark, which consists of business-oriented ad hoc queries and concurrent data modifications. This particular example is a shipping priority query, which retrieves the shipping priority of the orders with the highest revenue among unshipped orders. So let's run that right now inside Bodo. And while that's running, let's take a look at the code. So this is running once again on our cluster, and it's just one Bodo JIT function. What it does is it uses pandas read parquet to read data from S3, and then it performs the actual query computation, which for us is just written as pandas code. Now, we're going to compare this to Spark in a little bit. And in Spark, when we look at this actual execution of this query, it's going to be written in SQL. But we are going to get the ease of using pandas, and simultaneously we're going to get a performance improvement. And when we take a look, we see that this only took 0.069 seconds to run inside Bodo. OK, so now let's run the same example, but inside Spark. As I queue this up to run, let's take a brief look at the code. It's written in PySpark, but what's important to note is the, all of the actual query computation is done inside this string, which is really SQL code. So to run this in Spark, you have to write SQL. There's also some additional code outside here, and that's all glue code. And when you get large applications, that glue code overhead can really add up. Just to take a brief look at our cluster, we're running this in AWS EMR to give Spark the best performance. And we're running it on the same exact cluster for C5n 18x large instances. Now, if we go back, we're going to see that Spark is still running. And you might be wondering, why is Spark taking so much longer to run? That's because there are fundamental design decisions in Spark that limit the amount of parallelism it can get. Spark uses what's called the tiny task model. So there's overhead with queuing up all of these tasks that are spread across the cluster. That means there isn't actually true parallelism, and this is much slower than the parallelism offered by Bodo directly, which is the same parallelism from HPC applications. All right, now this is finished running, and it took over 21 seconds to execute that SQL query. Remember, in Bodo, this was 0.069 seconds. That's over a 300 times speed up if you run this in Bodo. That's all for our video. If you'd like to learn more about us, please visit our website, bodo.ai. We will have more videos coming soon, so please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel so you can get all the latest updates. Finally, if you're interested in our self-service cloud platform, please contact us about the opportunity to join our Insider program for advanced access. See you in the next video.